Uh, we should just be talking. Yeah. Okay. Hey, guys. Hey. <laughs> this is my brother, Jamie. This is going to be our first ever podcast. Hello. And if you're seeing this intro, you're watching the full-length podcast, but it'll also be clipping certain segments of this podcast yeah. into individual videos. We just spent 20 minutes goofing around, screaming at a dog... And trying to get Just comfortable. getting settled in. Yeah. Trying to decide how close the mic should be to my face. This but is good. I think this is good. This is good. That's too close. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be such a mess. Anyway. That was a weird sound. <laughs> if you can't handle this, click off now. Yeah. We don't... We won't. This, this is not about... You. This is about us talking. That's okay. so mean to We're the just viewer. looping you into this. Kay. Okay. You should be thankful. You're just being looped into our conversation. In fact, it was such a pain to film this. <laughs> you should be grateful. You should be going down. I mean, you should see the way Jan put the camera up. It's like... It's, it's interesting. <laughs> like, you could have done better. <laughs> <laughs> I can always do better when it comes to setting up the camera. I like it sketchy. Um, what is this podcast about, Jan? Jan. This is about me and Jamie. We're going to be talking about where we grew up, how Jamie got into knife making. He's now a musician slash music producer. You, you just uh, said... You said musician. Yeah. <laughs> first, time, first time I didn't uh -huh. say musician, he was offended. Yeah. Um, first time I was like, he makes music. No, I wasn't offended because I'm afraid to call myself that too. Get away! Do you think if we bring it in here, she'll be fine? Like, bring the en bring your enemy close. Bring the dog. Bring the dog here. Why is she barking? She's That's the. Could you please bring the dog into the house? No, she's outside. Can we like, lock her out? Well, yeah, that's the other idea. You she's barking, that. but it's not that. too bad. There's a haunt. Lock her out. Yeah, no, yeah. Do you have like a muzzle? What do you call that thing you put on a <laughs> dog? Yeah. We can make one. She can still make noise with the muzzle on. Not as much. We could just tape her mouth shut. Yeah. And her legs. Okay, can we. <laughs> Yes. Chuck in a closet. We're joking about animal cruelty. Yeah, we're just joking. We're just not actually going to do it. <laughs> JP, come on, JP, come on. Put it um, okay, so. Cut, we can cut this, this podcast <laughs> is going to be about everything containing me and Jamie. Because we're just going to be talking. I feel like, so recently, and by recently I mean 11 months ago. I moved. It's been 11 months. It's been 11 months. I moved from Lesotho to Kimberley. Yep. And uh, to work and just kind of get out. Because... Unfortunately, you're not gonna build any sort of career in Lesotho, and we like uh, that's just the reality of it. So I'm here. Um, lately, I've been getting into a groove of actually making videos too, which is great. Because for the first while, I, I I didn't make any videos. Like my yeah, you just did Instagram things, shorts. Still, but even I even didn't do Instagram for quite a while, which is fine though. Yeah, but I just I stopped. I didn't have the space to create, but now that I've become comfortable, we're finally making stuff. Mm. Um, they might they might not be great, but you know we're making stuff. Yeah. So, anyway, let's go into the first topic, which is <laughs> I put two two minutes into planning this video, so I just went, where did we grow up? Let's see, Chumalaya Chiteng. Yes. What he just said. We grew up in remote Lesotho, which is... Surrounded by mountains. Yeah. We're in the lowlands of Lesotho, in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by mountains. A lot of cows and goats and cattle, and that kind of stuff. There's always a shepherd looking at you. Fields all around you. Yes, always someone looking at you. Don't don't ever think it's cool to be naked out in nature. Someone will see you. Yeah, no, nobody ever thought that. That was all you. <laughs> I've done it a couple of times. Didn't I do it with you? No. I, I feel like I did it once. You, yeah. I you, did do it once. And immediately you were like, whoa, the air between my butt feels amazing. <laughs> it's, there's, it's, there's not, there's it, nothing. You were immediately good. hooked. There's nothing as good as being naked out of nature. And naked. <laughs> and naked. 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 Um. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. Uh oh. We're about to eat in a while. Um. Okay. Okay, so that's where we grew up. Yeah. Surrounded by mountains. Middle mountains of just go on and on. Um, we were in a small village. Yeah, we started in Sinyani. Yeah, that is called Tuteng, which some people call it Hapita, which is our dad. It means place of Peter. Yeah, but we started in Sinyani. We moved up to Malaya. Malaya. Then from there we moved up to Tuteng, where we finally were building our own home. It started yeah. as an 
empty field and now there's a big base there it's yep, incredible the what god has done with the ministry over the years but we grew up witnessing the ministry grow because we grew we went to Lesotho when i was eight and you were seven yes you got it right this time i've i've submitted to your version of the story um when i was eight and you were seven we moved to Lesotho because my parents were called to ministry there so that's the life we grew up with. We're, we're PKs and MKs, pastors' kids and missionaries' kids, and we were homeschooled. I like to think we didn't turn out too weird. <laughs> but yeah, we did, we're not weird. We're, we're not weird at all. We're not weird. We're cool. <laughs> so, what do we think? Yeah. <laughs> Immediately in my head, I'm like, there's some weird stuff I could do right now to prove we are weird. Um, but yeah. <gasps> Whoa. <laughs> Did Sorry, just checking if it's clipping every time I laugh. Did it clip? No. It's not clipping. The audio wave is... The it's, it's waveform cool. is good. Okay. Oh, we're just gonna go tick, 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 tick. This is exhausting. It kicked me out of the page. I was just there now, bro. I was there just now, bro. Where did we grow up? How did Jamie get into knife making? That's a good one. That's a funny story. Okay, so the years went by and John was secluded and getting chubby and playing a lot of Need for Speed on the computer. And eventually it got into video because you played soccer. Yep. And I didn't. Because the one time I did, I scored. <laughs> you for scored the... for the other team. Yeah. You were so happy. You're like, yes, I finally got the ball. And then I thought I everyone was... was like shouting at Jan, like Jan, other way, don't go that way. Jan I was did not head. care. He was like, I finally got the ball because nobody would pass the ball because he was not a good soccer player. And then he finally got the ball. He just ran to the goal, and then the whole other team saw what was happening, so they just left Jan. <laughs> I thought I was doing Go. what you guys call dribbling. I was like, I'm on fire. <laughs> they can't stop me. They can't stop me. I scored for the other I team. I scored the other team. That's the day Jan gave up on soccer. <laughs> no one told me you switch at halftime. Yeah, I think that's what happened. Yeah, so, anyway. I, I remember I, being angry. At you, like, oh, you, you were mad. Disappointed, actually. <laughs> yeah, it was. that's worse than being angry. Um, so, I didn't play soccer. You did. And the way I kind of got my footing into the team and I could have some sort of friends was I would be the video the video guy for the team. Yeah. So fast forward we're doing that. You So we were homeschooled. You were actually into and videography we, very soon. Yeah. Even before soccer. Well I, I explained this in my artist statement that the way I got into video and photo was um I felt neglected by my dad and neglected by the my peers, aka you and your friends, and the only way I could get JP's moving a lot. I'm just getting so sad. The only way, chill. The only way I could <laughs> get into the the only way I was able to get noticed or be noticed was by making videos because my dad needed videos for the ministry. Mm. You guys needed videos for the team, so like that was my in, and I, and I explained that in my artist statement. But so I was doing videos. We were doing unschooling, which means you would learn through a hobby, effectively, your interests. Yeah. It didn't work. It was a terrible idea, but we did it nonetheless. It um, wasn't terrible. I mean, that was bad. It was okay. I got... I mean, it was, it was bad, but that's... Isn't that how I started the I got thing? super glue in my eye in <laughs> half class. I remember that. Because I was trying to build a helicopter out of wire and an plastic. RC, RC helicopter. It was he stupid. was fine. <laughs> Un unschooling was stupid for us. But anyway. No, but that's... Isn't that actually how I started knife making? Cause yeah, we because we had to so choose something. Then dad went, what do you want to do? And this this dude said... Guns. I want to make, make guns. guns. <laughs> so obviously, it's like nine-year-old making guns. No. No. So my dad was like, how about we start with knives? Great idea, dad. So we started with knives. So then... It we proceeded, or you proceeded to just beg my dad for the necessary materials and tools. Uh, and he wanted to do it right. He kept being like, we'll do the research. We'll get you the belt sander, we'll the right the metal. Right steel and yeah. everything. That, and then that day he went to town. You decided, I'm going to rebel. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, found the I guess. thickest piece of steel I've ever thickest seen. It was, it was so thick, dude. It was thick. Yeah. Six, six millimeters. That's 
pretty thick. You took that piece of steel. Yeah. And you took an angle grinder. With help of friggin'. Yeah, and you all just me. went at it. And you made a knife. Yeah. You still have that original knife. Yeah, I, all the other knives after that I've given away or sold. Yeah. Cause, and and I was like, yeah, no, you should do it. That's what was so knives. amazing is you had an immediate interest. Like there was immediate interest shown for what you were doing. Mm -hmm. And that spurred you on to keep doing it. Yeah. And now all these years later, you're like trying to take it full time and make a career out of it, which is dope. Like that yeah. would have never happened if uh, certain people didn't go, this kid's making knives. He's how old? You were like 12. Like, this kid's making knives. Yeah. Yeah. And they supported you and you kept giving away knives. Some were sold. <sighs> Poor people. All that they were sold. Most of them, well, not not all of them were sold, but I mean, like, I don't have much. You don't have those knives anymore. Yeah, you have photos though. But we I didn't think do Andre great. got a lot. Yeah, Andre. Got, which is Andre he's, he's was like your lot. number one client yeah. customer, and uh, which ended up be leaving like it was it was a bad thing because he got all the tests uh, as you were learning, and I was like, what are these knives? <laughs> uh, but I anyway, it's fine. yeah. Well, that's the process you had to go through, and. It, it enabled you to keep practicing. And dude, now the knives you're making are just legit. They're sick. Yeah. Like, the, your personal knife, you finally, after all these years, went, you know what? I need a, <laughs> I need a knife for myself. I need one. Like, what I've made. Just, I He's need a knife. He's literally always just been carrying around other people's knives. And then finally he went... And then losing them. Yes. And then he went, I need to, like, actually represent my brand. Oh, hold on. So this is your own personal knife. It's so sick. I love the handle. It's one of the more unique handles. Yeah, that's why I like it. What is it again? Uh, I can't remember what ho uh, horn it is. Whether it was it's horn cow. Or okay, ram. but it has this really and then a, a black G10 inlay. Yeah, oh, so you, sorry, liner. So you put this black liner on it, and it's really translucent. That's the word. So you can see on the edges like the black fade. Yeah, and, and because the and handle, you can literally see through the pins and everything yeah. too. Yeah. So because the ha the the material is semi transparent, it's got like this weird glow to it. And it becomes increasingly dark towards the edges as it's thinner, so it gets to it gets closer to the black liner. It's a really cool handle. It's yeah. an incredible piece. Um, and this is a knife. This is the the sixty third knife you ever made. Yeah. So each knife I do that with, which yeah. I've made my one hundredth knife the other day, which I want to make a video about that. That's cool. Yeah. Was it a nice? Did you like actually try and plan I which tried. one was going to be the hundredth one? No, it just happened. <laughs> You literally could have chosen which one because you make them in batches. You could have oh, been like, yeah, this yeah. is the hundredth no, one. But this the, is the dopest that, one. That one was, it's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay. So, that's pretty cool. Um, it's crazy how much you've developed. And now you're like, you're buying on tools real quick because you're, you're starting to recognize that these could act as heirloom pieces. And they need to be able to hold up over time. You 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 bought. Sure, I hope they do honestly. Cause you got some super serious book about them, the science of. I just need to read it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you do it books. Yeah, I buy books. The reading part still has to come. <laughs> but you wanna make sure the blade holds up. Yep. Because it's all about the steel. Because you could even replace the handle over time. Oh yeah, if you need to. Yeah. Yeah. So that's super cool where you're taking the whole knife thing. And we've been trying. It, making videos for you has been an, a wonderful opportunity for me to practice making commercial, more commercial style videos. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's never been me. Like, I, feel, I made videos for the ministry and I made videos for the soccer team in the beginning. And, like, I carried on in that theme. So, like, Everything that I've always done has just been documenting. Like, I've just been making short docs, basically. Well, that's always... Yeah, you've always liked doing that, though. And I'm not about like, to say documentary... What was your thing? Yeah. But I'm not about to say documentary filmmaking is easy. I'm just going to say it's easier to pick up a camera and just film what's in front of you. It, it takes a lot more creative direction mm. and visual direction to... Uh, right. To plan out a story, mm. try and, you know... Uh, direct the model. And, no, I agree. Yeah, and, and try and showcase a product in a lifestyle shoot. It's difficult. Yeah, because, like, documentary style is very much, like, 
put the camera on the guy. Yeah. And try to piece some of the stuff together. Kind and of I, thing. And I grew to have an eye for that. And I love it. I want to keep... I, I see so much room to grow and become even better at it. But it has been so much fun practicing making commercial videos for you. And when I say commercial, yeah. I just mean lifestyle product videography, to be exact. And because like when I started, I didn't know how to like transition and have product shots. And like, and the latest videos I've made, I love them. Yeah. And I see so yeah. much room to improve. Like we're supposed to head out tonight and film more. I want to film for the not of this world. Hopefully sure. we'll be able to have enough energy to go do that. Mm hmm. Because I'm tired. We're yeah. both kind of tired. You better not be grumpy. I've been very grumpy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's fine. That's I know fine. how to deal with grumpy. Grumpy John is normal for you guys. Yeah. I've been loud too. I've been the definition of chill for the last couple of months. And then they come and visit. I'm like, it's my family. I'm going to be like, it, it ignited something in me. <laughs> a tribal instinct. Yeah. <laughs> Which then ended in a road rage incident. <laughs> no, no, someone else's road yeah, rage I incident. Yeah, I want to clarify, I wasn't mad. Uh, <laughs> I just thought it would be funny honking at this dude. Dry and then speeding off yeah. beside him and taking a sharp left. The speeding only happened because I And then I driving thought, past our home so you couldn't see where we're driving yeah, in. Yeah, I just thought it would be funny. And the speeding... It was funny for us. The speeding wasn't planned. The speeding <laughs> happened because this dude slammed on his brakes and I was like, I'm yeah, not sticking like around Yeah, he's like slowing down. He's like, I'm leaving. Go. I'm leaving, yeah. And so we didn't turn into our home. We just kept driving on so you wouldn't see where we're going. A few... One swear word was yelled at us. <laughs> oh, Afrikaners. Um, South Africans. All right. Should we like see what's next on that checklist? On this list, I mean, we co we covered. Uh, well, how but I'm really I'm really excited for for us to shoot some stuff tonight. Hopefully, I hope something. And a good couple comes other nights, because we want to do more lifestyle stuff. What what we, what we want to show is your knives in the context of like city. the city. Yeah, you know, not just like outdoors kind of stuff. And Kimberley looks more like a town. I just want to clarify, it's a city, but it looks more like a town. So we're showing the context, your knife in the context of a town, really. Yeah. Um, but it's gonna be good. It's yeah. gonna be good. We need some of those shots. We can't just all be like mountains yeah, let's, let's and stuff. Let's be positive. It's, oh, it's and gonna I, be good. It's I wanna like good. get the black backdrop out at some point and like make a fire i really want to shoot through the fire with yeah. the knife in the back i want to try some you've been wanting to do that every time you come every time we do some a, a shoot for you i've been wanting to do that because yeah. you've done two shoots now that have gone well we've tried so many times in the past they just never worked i just couldn't do product videography and photography you're getting better i'm getting better it took me time um but yeah. it's good because I'm trying to hopefully monetize that in the future. So I've had to practice it. Um, oh, nice next question. Oh, how are you, you made have any my questions ring? there for you? Or is it just all for me, my dude? Yeah, because you didn't prepare anything. Yeah. Shame on you. I'm just going to ask questions that come up. Okay. I still want to make a video about how you made my knife. My you made a knife for you? No, my bad. My <laughs> ring. <laughs> I made I was... a few knives. They've all disappeared or become... I was rusty uh, chair pieces. I was kind like, of like literally stuck yeah. under a chair or something. No, leave. <laughs> I'm waiting. No, they just left the door. They're like, I touched the hot handle. Shame. The it, door's gonna swing open. I guess I've been wanting to make a video for a while now, talking about how you made my ring. Yeah. This is a fun project and like amazing Christmas gift. Yeah, yeah, I still have the video of you opening it. Yeah. If you want it. You do? You took a video? Yeah, you're like, you made this? I was like, wow! <gasps> yeah. And then you clipped your necklace piece again and tried to squeeze it over your head. <laughs> okay. Uh, how I made it? Yeah, well, first of all, it's made out of tin. It yeah. was gonna be silver, but you didn't have two, what do you call those thingies? Cauldrons, no. Uh, s crucible? 
a yeah, it's called a crucible. That's a dope name for it. You didn't have two crucibles. So you weren't able to get it hot enough to melt silver, so you... Oh, no, 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 not crucible. A, a flamethrower? It no. couldn't go hot enough. No, you, but you needed two crucibles to contain the heat. Because it was an open bucket. No. But if you had a second crucible to put over it, it would have contained it. Remember, uh, yeah, we did yeah, some yeah. more research and we found out that was a problem. So we went to plan B and... Because uh, you made... You already made the, like, the wax thingy that you pour the metal yeah, so into. You f first make it out of wax, you do the whole shape and stuff, and then you kind of like put it on another wax stick, you... Dip it in some filler material. You kind of like stick it up, stick it up like this on a table, Yeah. and you put a like a, a tin can around it, and then you pour the mix, the plaster, or whatever you yeah. call it, uh, around it, and that solidifies. You burn the wax, like you heat up that cr that uh, the the, the tin plaster, can. the tin, and all that wax melts away, and so now it's just like an empty shape of the ring, and then you heat up the tin or whatever metal you're gonna throw in there, and then it literally just it. goes into that shape. And the pouring wasn't all that easy. No, yeah, but it was cool that you were there. Also, you did not like it because, like. Literally the whole day we're like trying to melt this stuff and figure everything out and then finally he we throw it. it and Jan can't see because it's, it's a gift. It's a gift and I love that. <laughs> he was like, just let me see. Yeah, and your reaction was annoyingly good too. You were just like, wow! <laughs> and I was like, let me see. And you were like, no. I want to see. Yeah. You can't. Yeah, I enjoyed that. I like this ring. I feel like it's a unique ring. And the idea was that there was going to be two. One for me, one for him. And I tried to throw mine before I came. But uh, it didn't work out. It's supposed to be part of the theme of the Sons of Thunder. And also in the Bible, James and John were called the Sons of Thunder. So, Jamie, yeah. John. Which is also so what this terrible Uganda tattoo is. It's supposed to be character. Yes. Um, so it's just, I made it so, yeah, it's like a piece you can look at and remember. <sighs> yeah. Remember us. I guess it's like a friendship bracelet, but friendship ring. It's cooler. Our friendship yeah. bracelet. Yeah. yeah. When are you getting your, tat your first tattoo? I don't know. I want to get one on my lip. Oh my word. <laughs> you, is that gonna be your first tattoo? I don't know why you guys are like, oh my word, but you guys are fine with tattoos. It's a lip tattoo! So what? Be supportive. You like, don't, you support me when I get anywhere else, but not my lip? I would be What's more- What's wrong with you? I would be more supportive of you getting a tattoo on your, on your, how am I gonna say this nice? Wow. Okay. I really don't care. If I get it, I get it. That's how I feel about it. Why do you want a lip tattoo? Because it's cool. I feel it's cool. <laughs> I'm about to Google pros and cons of getting a lip tattoo. Hold on. I'm trying to think of questions that I should have for you. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to get anything. How has the adjustment been coming to Kimberly? There's one. Okay, here we go. Pros and cons of lip tattoo. One, <laughs> it allows self-expression. It's not permanent. What? Aha. Uh -huh. How is it not permanent? I don't know. You bite your lip enough, it's not. <laughs> so, like, you could get one and then a decade later it disappears? You can hide it easily. <laughs> they let... <laughs> you, could get... you could get one and a decade later it disappears. So, like, now you can have a smiley face. When you hit your midlife crisis, you can get, like, a sad face. Sad face. Uh, oh. Um, I guess that would make it even better if you do that frown thing where the people go like this. Like this. You should look. These pros are so stupid. They let you keep up with the trend. They hurt a lot. Jamie. Again, they are temporary. It's good only for small tattoos. It is risky. What does risky mean? I mean, it's in your mouth. So. It can increase your risk for infection. Yeah. In your mouth. You got a dirty mouth, so it's gonna be a problem for you. Dude, stop. That was mean. <laughs> yeah, dirty mouth. Well, if you wanna do it, do it, Jamie. Oh my 
They have done it. Canonello's so st- done one. It's so stupid. Canonello's done you one. You guys just really <sighs> get a tattoo anyway. Just not your lip. Jamie has been getting into music production. This has been a cool journey to watch. You made Knives and Knives Alone for the longest time. I've always wanted to do something more like... Um, like on the laptop and be working there. I mean, it's cool to have something physical, like the knife making. It really is nice because you can see what you finish, like, in front of you. It is immediately realized. Why? (laughs) Love you. (laughs) Okay. Let's love you, but get out. (laughs) I imagine a different word. <laughs> uh, no. Okay. What were we saying? Mike? It's right there, dude. I work with it. I know it's going to sound. I, uh, yeah, we're literally talking about that. So, you started playing keyboard. And that's how it all started? I think I started playing guitar. Then I oh, my bad. Keyboard. I forgot he plays guitar. I don't know when... I... <laughs> Just no, you didn't forget... That. It just passed me by. Yeah, it passed you by. <laughs> yeah, I played guitar. It sounds like it's so boring to talk about this. Started playing guitar. Started singing with the guitar. Um, which I feel I I know. Could you not do that? My singing has that become be better. Be audio. Better over over the years. So you got into music. Yeah, I got into music. Period. And I've loved seeing you like develop those skills. It's become like, it almost seems like a safe haven for you because you get to just sit in front of the computer. Like, this is what I experienced in video. Mm. It's this beautiful moment where you can just unwind from whatever was happening that day and you can make something completely new out of nothing. I like it. Yeah, it's true because like, I also realize, like, is that, but it can also be a source of stress if I'm too critical about everything. Yeah. Um,. But it's very fun when I just make something and finish something without being too critical about everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, like, yeah. I, I'm very critical about Me everything. Me too. We both have that weird twerk. I think we get it from tweak. our parents always being stressed about something. When twerk, tweak, thingy to, our, to ourselves. We both are highly critical. Mm. Yo! Donkey! <laughs> Now you don't care that he Thank walks you. in the room. Please check because you close the door. Where's the knife? <laughs> get the get the knife. Wait, you want to eat while recording? Is it yes. gonna be like gross? Who cares? What is that? It looks like chocolate. Yeah. Yo. Wait, hold the bag. <laughs> hey. What is this? It's literally chocolate. Oh. oh, wait. It's got biscuits inside. Whoa. Yeah, music. And I've missed having you there because I like how critical you are as well. It's like, if something's good, it's like, Jan's like, yeah, that's good. If something's bad, it's bad. But also, I also realize more and more my taste and is also a little bit different. Sometimes it can be really cool to me, but you don't like it. So then is when I have to go like, oh, it's you just don't like it. Yeah, it doesn't mean it's bad. Mm. And I feel like I do a good job of telling you, yeah. I don't like it. It's not my vibe. Yeah. Which I understand that now. But obviously you want that affirmation of being like, it's a good... My word. <laughs> <laughs> Sneezes annoy me endlessly. I noticed this morning. <laughs> I was so mad. No. Okay, maybe we should put these away. Okay, the podcast is not gonna continue if we keep eating these. <laughs> People's like, we came to watch you, sp- you speak if they're watching. <laughs> not eat. <laughs> Wait. I 
bet you that's gonna freak you out. I have to edit that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm currently. Don't say that. That's so bad. I'm, I'm and then curling. you're like. <laughs> I'm, I'm very much in that part of my faith walk where I'm trying to clean myself up. Hashtag <laughs> <laughs> <Like> everyone. <sighs> it's difficult. Mm -hmm. Especially because everyone has different standards. Like I feel like saying the S word, or like BS, or like damn and hell. I gotta bleep all this. I feel like those. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I feel like those. They don't feel as impactful to me as like saying the F word. Yep. And dude, South Africans just be vulgar. Mm -hmm. We don't mind cuss words, most of us. Yeah. Um, and I've always just been vulgar. Vulgar. Yeah. Like, if the joke doesn't make your jaw drop, I'm not telling <laughs> it. Um, like, made up in other ways now. Yeah. So, I'm in that part of my walk where I'm trying to clean myself up. Recognize that it's not... It doesn't help... It does not do any good for both my image and the in image of the kingdom of God if, I, if I'm if i super vulgar the That's entire true. time. The entire time. <laughs> <laughs> There's exceptions. No, I'm kidding. There really <laughs> shouldn't be. But the, right now, there are definitely... Oh, my word. That noise. Every noise in existence is annoying me today. Are you going to react to every yes, noise? every noise is annoying no, me today. Move on. Um, the dog barking. My word. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that fly? <laughs> Dude, I'm high, but what? I'm high. <laughs> no, because I'm because of my I don't know if it's ADHD or what, but like when I drive, I hear the person that I just drove by his footsteps. That's in your head, John. You can't literally can't hear you, it. You can. Depending on how no, it depends where they're walking, you genius. Like if they <laughs> if they if they're like walking oh, on the, the sidewalk and it's dirt. And you can hear like the dirt. Oh, that's true. But if they're just walking on the road, I'm not hearing that. Obviously, yes. No. Or I hear I like the, the individual walk into the door and they like that that sound from like like opening their door. I hear all that stuff as I'm driving by. Hmm. Well, it was because you're focusing on that. Yeah, I really should be focusing on the road. That's true. <laughs> I, I, I also recognize that with myself. Dude, I feel like I'm, a, I'm no, I know I'm a terrible driver. Because driving, yeah, JB's like, everyone that's driven me, driving a full minute on the wrong side of the road, uh, on the main road of, of the city, that's... A, oh, yeah, I feel better now, you know? Now, because, like, each time coming back into civilization, I need to sort of, like, relearn how to drive, <laughs> drive properly. Yeah. And especially what I hate is judging the distance when you're turning in somewhere and you have to wait for all the cars to pass uh, or drive before they come. Oh, my word. Totally suck at that. Lesotho is so free flowing. It is chaos, and I thrived in it. I was made for it. <laughs> I was made for all the twists and the turns. Yeah, you just fit right in. Yeah, <laughs> I look like every other drunk driver. I just fit right in, and I'm sober when I'm driving. I'm sober. <laughs> yeah, like, I, but I look like I'm drunk when I'm driving. It's bad. Um, I turned into. I turned head on. Into an oncoming truck. When I was on the city last time. Hmm. And I cool. couldn't just go to the other side of the road. Because it was a physical division. And I had to like speed towards the truck coming at me. <laughs> so I could clear the division and then wow, go to the other side of the road. Yeah. <laughs> How did you even end up on that side? I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. Yeah, that happens a lot. Uh, I don't pay attention to keep left signs. Yeah, when you realize... You, you wake up, then you're like, oh, what the heck was going on? And then you start placing. Yes. It will be chaos. How have you been dealing with me moving? Ouch. Because we <laughs> didn't have friends yeah, growing it's, up. It's we just hard. had each other. And although that wasn't always good, because I remember one time trying to hit you with a hammer because I was so <laughs> mad I'm out of you. Yeah, you got lit. You <laughs> got lit. was on fire. Almost Cain and Abel kind of stuff. <laughs> We can't enable that stuff. It was just us. <clears throat> <coughs> yeah, that was normal for me. I was I was a furious kiddo. 
Yeah, I mean, like, you had to have used other source, sources, you know. You couldn't have beaten me with your your strength. Yeah. Unfortunately, I was a young... Yeah, I was a younger brother, but I was also more athletic and s strong. I was a weasel. So young would just, like, hammer him. <laughs> I don't know. It obviously, it's been hard, you know. It's also been good, I guess. Because I think I've... I've always been very dependent on you, but yeah, I'm scared we're going to go too far apart sometimes. Yeah, you told me. We were sitting in the car, it's dead silent, and he goes, <laughs> you don't text me enough. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I said it like that? Yeah. I said, we don't text enough. Uh-uh. You also one time said on the call, you just got so serious, you were like, you don't text me enough. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work. And both times, I just... Cracked out laughing. I was like, okay, I get the message. I don't know how to change it. <laughs> you don't know how to change it. I just. Yeah. Text about what? I don't know. We gel when we're together. And we. We're. Dude, we're both so consumed by what we're trying to do that we like we we have a handful of people we text and that's it and you know that that is honestly yeah we don't have a lot of people text we I mean would, i had do but there's too many to keep we would text more if we texted about work that's true but you don't want to text about work i don't want to but i do if if if, if there was a constant back and forth between like yo check out this change to that instagram just made to the algorithm try and post this instead or like what do you think about I don't this do visual that kind of stuff yet yeah what do you think about this visual design jamie like what if we make a pamphlet that looks like this for you if, if we were constantly doing that stuff we would be texting so much more i mean it would but i always just think you're too busy and no <laughs> yeah i have a normal uh, eight to five job. Not that busy. Yeah, but sometimes you freak out. Yeah. <laughs> I love doing that to you. I was just scrolling on Insta now. I heard. <laughs> while I was peeing, because I can't just like pee and not <laughs> scroll. <laughs> so. Entertain myself. Jeff Marmelstein was a street photographer that for years photographed New Yorkers' text messages without them knowing. That's so interesting. It's also called creeping. Yeah. Right. Dude. <laughs> Aww. That's dope. What is a unique take. Le legal? Yeah. Cool. That's weird. Also gross. Yeah. I'm just doing a screen record so I can show it <laughs> on the video of the artist. That's, that's, that's such a unique take. The dude went, he saw the vulnerability in a text chain, in a one-on-one -on -one text chain. And he decided to photograph. There's no other context to the, that, in, in that individual's life other than that text chain. And uh, I think that's a great take. That's sick. Like if I was walking around in a gallery, I'd want to look at these text messages and like really, really take a while and read through them and try and put myself in the shoes of the texters. Yeah. That's dope. People don't say dope anymore. I don't care. <sighs> we have 20 minutes left. Yeah. This has been fun. It would have been more fun if there wasn't constant interrupting. I didn't mind the inter interruption. I'm trying to work on my zen. <laughs> I realized I was like, I was expecting you like, ah, like heat up and like freak out. No. You did good. You did good. No. Very inspirational, Leon. Don't freak out, because people just they are an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> They're just not you. And. W <laughs> Man, I can't. I believe they don't it was, always play into what you want. I'm gonna say this. I, I believe it was a John Piper, Ask Passer John Piper from this Iron God clip that I listened to. Dot com. Where? Dot com. And I, and I, I don't like bringing up John Piper now because I'm like, oh, he's a hyper Calvinist and I don't know. Like, is he hyper Calvinist or a 10 point Calvinist? Or is he a Calvinist? I don't know, but he's a Calvinist. And his stuff is a lot more serious. 
but he's still a good preacher. And I'll listen to one of his clips and he explained that the root of anger is trying to control, play God. Something Which makes those sense lines. actually because when you do get angry, it's because everything isn't playing into how you've imagined you it. You have decided how this day is supposed to go. No one is allowed to walk through that door because I decided the perfect scenario and the way this filming goes is nobody walks through that door. That's it's all about That's you. True. It is true. No. That is true, yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's not fun being angry the whole time. No, it isn't. Yo, you want to talk about the Raw Adventures days? Oh yeah, that was a dope day. That, that was a fun day. Dope days. So, let's go back to the beginning of the timeline. We moved to Lesotho. I am secluded. I use video as my photos and videos as my in with both my dad and my... And I, I hold nothing against my dad. I, I'm sure he doesn't even like me saying this stuff, but it's a reality. Um, yeah. And my brother and his friends, I used photos and videos as my in. Jamie was I very didn't outgoing. I have that much friends, did I? Well, it, the cultural differences stopped them from being like real friends. Real friends yeah. But you could, you also could go money. play soccer and have fun. <laughs> yeah, the perceived wealth. The, no, not the perceived, the actual relative... Poverty. Mm. That's a bad way of putting it. The relative wealth difference. We weren't wealthy, but compared to the locals, we most certainly were. So th that also made it really difficult to just make friends that were unbiased and just wanted to hang out. Mm. So you were doing that. You started making knives. I remained chubby until I was like 15. I watch a video from GMBN, Global Mountain Bike Network. And in it, they show what enduro mountain biking is. And I had always thought of mountain biking as spandex, cross country, <laughs> mind bogglingly freaking boring. Mind bogglingly, is that even a word? Mind, mind bendingly boring. It sucked. Uh, it was funny actually, just it's very funny. All the spandex, yeah, and all the spandex is funny. I'm sorry stuff. if you wear that. I'm sorry, not nothing against you, yeah, but <laughs> I don't, but I don't want to see that, yeah. I also it's don't want to wear it. It's public indecency, is what it is. <laughs> Until it's a chick driving by, I'm like, I'm cool with it, yeah. I'm that's... kidding, I'm, I'm kidding, kidding. Uh, sort of, <laughs> sort of. Uh, oh but it is, boy. it is the grossest when it's like a middle aged man in a spandex suit, yeah. <sighs> I mean, most of them are. I think if you, you can wear the, you know, the under part and then you wear, put a cool pants. Wear and, your bibs. I mean, you can look or your cool. your chamois, whatever you, you call can, them. You can and look then cool wear shorts and over them. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to not wear padded shorts, but wear normal shorts over them, please. Um, For the other people. Yeah. Anyway, let's hop off this topic before we make some people angry. Yeah. Um, um, I come across this video of Enduro Mountain Biking. And my mind's blown! I'm like, they're going down mountains. There's technique to it. And and I'm certain what hooked me was the technique side of it. Mm. I was like, oh, this is something you can progress at. Um, and immediately... But also, it's not just that. It's like this style in it. You're going over rocks. Yeah. And we had bicycles. Not mm. terrible bikes. But we had bicycles. I immediately went, Jamie, Dad, let's go. We went on our <laughs> first mountain bike ride. I still remember that ride. I, remember. I remember the trail. I remember... Parts that you rode and I didn't because you always had guts I'm and sorry. I didn't want to die. Yeah, I, I've always, I guess it's stupid, but I've felt bad for being better at than me because I loved I, the sport and you were just better at, at it. Yeah, because I me. always I always think like, if, what if you were better and I think it's like... Yeah, but it's not it fair because you be were feeling. so outdoorsy growing up and I wasn't. Mm. I couldn't even skid. You know when you just grab a handful of rear brake and the like back wheel just slides? I couldn't even do that on a mountain bike. Mm. Like I was terrible at riding bikes. But you were very like, remember that time you made that, my, in Bloomington you fell, but after that and like you just constantly progressed and progressed. Yeah. I was so hooked for some random reason. Which is really good. Yeah. It, 
Yeah. Because up until that point, I was building remote control planes. I never made one fly. <laughs> That's so funny. Hey, yo, they flew. For a Some second. of them. So, yeah, for a little bit. Yeah. And then... <laughs> for years, I was doing this. Couldn't get one fly. <gasps> Terrible, I know. I should have just gone and bought, like, a beginner's one. Gone yeah. to an official, like, little hobby runway. Not try and do everything on my own. Because I, I went straight to the advanced side of, like, having, like, these odd techniques for taking off. Because we didn't have a runway and whatnot. I didn't have mm. a good ground for practice. But anyway. And I just... And growing up, I always wanted to make YouTube videos. Like, that was the other thing with videos for me. I just wanted to, to like, share my passions, okay? Mm. So when this mountain biking thing grabs me, and it does, I just started making videos about it. Yeah. I have like videos back on my old rally of what's effectively a Walmart mountain bike. Yeah, you supermarket. I, I, wasn't the first bike. one you you made a DIY wheel straightener, yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's out a, of PVC pipes. It's a bad video, and my voice it was. So bad. But I mean. I think the fun part of that is always seeing the progression. That video got too many views. It, yeah. it was so sad. <laughs> How many views it, did, it got? Actually. It was so bad. Anyway, um, I just got lucky with it ranking high on the search and it actually being a thing that was searched relatively often. Yeah. Um, anyway, so. And like a bunch of stuff. Then we started like build, uh, me and you started building a, a small pump track or whatever in the backyard so small yeah so what happened was i went on a ride on the gates of paradise trail that was part of a annual race that occurred called the malaria monster mm -hmm. and i went on this trail and my mind was i was like this is like a path it wasn't made for mountain biking but it was good for mountain biking i was like this is a path made for mountain biking it felt so different riding that track. I was hooked on it. I was yeah. like, this is so different than riding double track like Jeep track or on the gravel road. I was mm. like, this is it. And it, it made something, it sparked something in me. And I then got hooked on the idea of trail building and making my own paths. And my creativity stepped in on that side. I was like, I could make something new. So we started building little mini pump tracks, stuff that didn't work kept on making videos eventually got my own first like real mountain bike then i got a second mountain bike we got really into trail building um i went to an event called kingdom majora which was the first ever ews event in africa um it was a qualifier ews and i got to see the insane stuff that were possible in a mountain bike like i had no i, I didn't have a community of mountain bikes around me we just did yeah. our own thing we were so secluded um and I got to see what was possible. I came back crazy. I was like, we're riding the mountain. Yeah, it was like, and everything you said was like, Daryl did this. <laughs> that's wasn't, a, that's embarrassing. Daryl, Renee, Chris, uh, and no, a couple no, other guys. Didn't you say Renee? Renee was yeah, the craziest. Renee did this. Renee would do it like this. Technical writing was my... No, I'm talking about just the building though. The building yeah. of the train. So I would always use, a, use that as a justification <laughs> Jamie would be like, you want to die? And I'd be like, Renee would write this. <laughs> Renee! Yeah, Renee! us? Anyway, things got out of hand. It was always fun. But yeah, I miss I it. I miss it, dude. Yeah. Because like, it's always so fun. Like, there's something different about just going out the, the whole day. You're hiking up an hour. You're talking. Um, it takes an hour just to hike up to the spot. Then you start building for like me, six hours. Yeah. At least. You laugh, you with, uh, and that's also where we uh, uh, spent a lot of time with Sachaba because he went and helped us with a friend. friend. Yeah, and you can just also just be quiet and work and think and you know, it, yeah, it was really good. There's a bit of solace in it, mm. um, and getting to build something and then having to go test it is that's like a whole process that is in its cool. own. Although I had a tendency to build stuff that I couldn't ride. Because mm. I tried to push too hard. Yeah, but. And I didn't have the guts to like actually ride. But I had my guinea pig. Mm. <laughs> it's like, go test it. Go test it. Ride it. See if you break your neck. And then actually, go. you did do that a lot. Yeah. But, like, you go ride first. <laughs> I was literally my plan always. Did you take your hand off. Oh, you take your hand off. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm not allowed to touch him. I just lean. You can touch me. You just don't keep it there. <laughs> just, I can't do this. No. Okay. <laughs> that was awkward no I'm kidding um, and you know what Rod Ventures taught me was the 
it was the first thing that I got to build. And I got to have an idea, see it. build the channel, see it grow, yeah. put in consistent work every week. Uh, yeah, that's Sometimes also true. I spent a lot of time. It was there were difficult times with it because we would literally build all week, and I would edit all night just to get a, one video out each Not, week. Yeah, I, I, it was. I loved it, dude. Like you working on it, seeing you work on it, and also. I think the family gave some input, do this, do that. It was a weird time where my videography skills just shot up. Yeah. And they... And yes, yeah, practicing thumbnails a lot, remember that? Yeah. And I still have so much to improve. Like, it's difficult. One of the things have been that have been causing me to be sad... That's I know that's sad, but... One of the things that's been hard <laughs> on me... I know that it's sad that it's sad. <laughs> one of the things that that's been sense. difficult on me has been... One of the things that's been difficult on me is uh, accepting that I'm not really as good at video as I thought. Mm. I got good at making a Raw Adventures video. Mm. I don't have a broad skill set with video, and that's what I'm working on right now. I think it's good that you realize that, but... Yeah, I guess you do have that image in mind. You're like, you're so good. Da, da, da. Yeah, because you, you get oh, really wait. good at making the same types of videos every week. Yeah, and then you and then you don't know how to like make other types of videos, mm -hmm. and it's it's a it's a difficult realization. But um, it's been fine. I've been trying to climb out that hole for the last two years. Because eventually, I did move on from Raw Adventures. Yeah, I think you did learn how to work very hard through that, and I think especially with uh, also hiking up. Uh, like some days we went in a row, you know. I think we also did learn how to work pretty hard there. It was we learned how to like eat. oh gosh we're so tired yeah. and everything but you just you kept working you you kept consistent um, you just learned how to go through because you're everything. you're you're working for like two hours and it's a five second clip in a video. I think we actually did learn how to be actually good hard workers there. I think yeah. sometimes I feel like oh my gosh I'm not working that hard da -da 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 -da, but like. I think we did actually learn work ethic and a bit of discipline. going up and discipline, going up there, working there, you doing that. Yeah. Um, I think we did. I'm learn grateful how to we be had that opportunity workers. to learn that. Yeah. Like, sure. I mean, everybody can struggle with a little bit of laziness, but I think we know how to be hard work. We know you put in the work, you get something out. Yeah. We we'll understand that concept because we repeated it each week, <laughs> and we taught <laughs> ourselves that. Week. Yeah. How, why can I ask you? Why were you so willing to help me? This was my thing. You had your own dreams, but you spent so much time with me up on the mountain. I mean, I, I loved going up there. I loved being with you. You complained the a laugh. lot, though. I did, but I, I enjoyed it. Okay. I, I did enjoy it. It was always going up. It was like, oh, but I loved it. Yeah. Being with you, you know, being with, well, not that much, such of, I mean, I did, but <laughs> mostly just hanging out with you. Two brothers building a trail. I mean, it was special. Huh. Although I did complain a lot and everything. <laughs> but that but was always getting a, out the theme of our relationship. Is I drag you out, and you're like, ugh. And then we come back, and you're like, that was fun. Yeah. And I would always be like, it's going to be two hours. And it's like an eight-hour bike ride. I always undersold it. Yeah, I think I was... We were close. So it's like going up with... Why would I just stay? And then you go up, and... Yeah. Yeah. My mind doesn't work like that, unfortunately. I, I know you wish it because I, you wanted me to also spend time doing your stuff with you. But I was like, this transaction does nothing for me. And it's, I know it's very selfish <laughs> and I feel bad about it looking back at it. Yeah. But that's why I'm so open about like, I'll help you as much as I can with Melody Knives. Like, I, I owe you so much. Um, and you're my brother. Like, uh, now I'm embracing the same spirit you had back then. Mm. That's all I'm doing. Honestly, that also was a part of it. Like, you kept asking. And I did feel bad when I didn't say yes. Yeah. And I wanted I wanted to be there for you. I wanted to help you. You... So... Yeah. I, yeah. You being the stronger brother, you I guess you felt some, like, need to help. Yeah. And there was a hard period where you and Sachaba basically carried the channel. Because I separated the shoulder... Had immediately went back into like doing too many pull ups and stuff, and I didn't do my physical mm. therapy the right way. Yeah. And then I like hurt my rotator cuff a little bit on this shoulder, and uh, I sprung up an old uh, knee knee injury, which is ju it's just tendonitis in my uh, frick. What's it called? 
I can't remember the tendon up front here. I forgot what it's called just now. Um, Trapezoid. <laughs> no. And I and I sprung up tendonitis in this knee. I started strapping this knee up and kept riding bikes. I know we gotta go. I kept riding bikes, and then I got tendonitis in the left knee. So there was a season where, like, I would strap up both my knees, paw painkillers, and then hike up the <laughs> mountain. <laughs> and then, just so I can hike up the mountain and film you guys building the trail. Yeah. Until I could, like, in the, and as much as I could, I would help out until I was like, I gotta tap out now. And I, I would gradually do more work again. Yeah. It was a, it was an odd time. Like, I was up on a mountain with my arm in a sling filming you guys build my trail. I can't remember that much of it. I just remember building and it was kind of the same. Yeah. Because I was never that much of a help. Could I? <laughs> <laughs> I was not yeah, missed. Yeah, I didn't realize any difference. Yeah, wow. Because you would actually go film so much. I'm, there was times like, oh my gosh, he just filmed the whole time. And He's just filming us working. Yeah, yeah. But... Because I had the video just with Just because I, I wanted you to do everything with us, though. Yeah. Yeah, but we should probably end this. We need to go. Yeah, we this need to go. This was fun. It was. Might do episode two in a I couple months. When you guys come visit again. Hopefully you can use and do something. Yeah, we really might have cool to film this. this all over again if this came out bad. Like if the Which audio maybe isn't even that working. Might not be the worst. Yeah. But I like what we got in this conversation. Yeah. It's, it's gonna be difficult Hopefully editing we it though. Said everything we said what we to had say. to for now. Yeah. And next time we'll say what we need to. Okay, we close it off. Yeah. Thanks for watching guys. Yeah. Uh might see you next week. I don't know. Yeah. Cool. See ya.